Hello Universe, Chris Thomas here, Super Bowl champion, eight-year NFL wide receiver, and Fusion Odyssey. And today, I'm about to give you the greatest gift you have ever received as a pass catcher in the game of football, and it's free. This video is called Mastering the Art of Catching Through the Mind. Your entire life, you've believed that in order to be a dynamic pass catcher, that you had to have these, these great natural hands and this great natural eye-hand coordination ability. And I'm here to tell you, after 15 years of working with wide receivers, that that couldn't be any further from the truth. So much of your ability to be a dynamic pass catcher requires you to unlock the mind, and that's what I'm going to do for you today. Before we get started, I'm going to address the elephant in the room, and that is this, is that we've become so accustomed to just believing that our ability to be great is a technical thing or a physical thing. And I'm here to tell you that that is an absolute farce. At the highest level of sports, they tell you the game becomes 85% mental and 15% physical. And after 15 years of working with young people, I know that they're accessing 0% of that mental space. And that mental game needs to exist in every single thing that they do, and it does not. I happen to be the guy who is the gateway to that mental game because I lived that mental game at the highest level of sports against the best athletes in the world and watched myself have extraordinary success over and over and over again because I was playing a game that nobody else around me was. It's the reason why after 15 years of working with wide receivers, I have watched guys who literally drop 70% of their balls turn around and in a couple of months be catching 80% of their balls. It's real. And it's all because of two things. They learn to get out of their own way and they learn to enter something like catching from the mind. And so that's what I'm going to give you today. So I need you to be patient. Part of what I'm about to give you is this whole psychological game with the ball that is immense in so many different ways that I'll go into detail about in just a moment. So this won't be a, here's how you catch technically, here's where you put your hands, and then I'm gonna walk away. That's not who I am. That's not my asset to you. That's not why I'm invaluable to you. It's because I understand how to unlock the mind and integrate that into things that you will do physically and technically. I could take someone and teach them everything technically there is to know about being a great dynamic pass catcher. And the reality is this, is that most athletes, except for the one, two, three percent, are, are athletes who go into performance already fearing failing, fearing being judged, fearing pressure, feeling like they need to be perfect not believing that they can live up to expectations. And that is overwhelming. I mean, I want you to think about that. In order to be great, it requires 100% dedication and you being 100% uninhibited. No reservations, no doubt, all the time in order for you to unlock your greatness. And so if you're entering development from a space of fear, what are your chances of ever discovering how great you can be? You'll never allow yourself to do that. It's like running on a treadmill and wanting, wondering like why you're not moving forward, right? So, so it's a brutal thing when you don't address the, the mental game, the emotional game, the psychological game, and the intellectual game for athletes. And it's to no fault of their own. They've never even heard it, let alone understand how to access it, meaning the mental game. And that's where this is going to absolutely inform them for one and transform them for two. So let's talk about that. Um, here's what I know about catching. Most athletes fear dropping a ball as, as their number one greatest fear, right? And how do I know that? Very simply, every single athlete wears gloves. Why do they wear gloves? Because it is their safety net. It is their security blanket. It's what they've convinced themselves will be the reason behind why they can actually catch. It's this false sense of security that somehow the ball is always going to end up in your hands simply because you have gloves on. And the reality is, is that that they can be further from the truth. You're going to be a great pass catcher because you've learned how to trust your hands and how to develop your hands in a way that you never doubt whether the ball will end up there. That's the only way you will ever be a dynamic pass catcher. Because if it was as easy as putting on gloves, right, as to the reason behind why you're going to be a great pass catcher, then every single kid on the planet wearing gloves would be a great pass catcher, and we both know that's not true. So I don't want you to believe you can catch because you have gloves on. That's no different than believing that you're going to be a 500 hitter in baseball because you have a certain bat. Because the second you don't have that bat, you're going to talk yourself into the fact that you can't hit. It's like being, believing that you're going to be this great golfer because of your clubs. And if you don't have those clubs, then you're not going to be able to hit the ball. 
right? It, it's, it's ludicrous. It's like believing in soccer that the reason you're going to be a great goal scorer is because you have a very specific ball or because you have very specific cleats. It, it's, it's ludicrous. But we're doing the same thing as wide receivers when we put on gloves. So we're not addressing really the underlying issue, which is I need to believe that I can catch dynamically because these are dynamic, because this is dynamic, right? And so in my program, how do I know that people fear? Because when you come out to my evaluation, and I typically have anywhere from 55 to 70 wide receivers that come out to my evaluation every year, the first thing I tell them is you can't wear gloves. The, the look of a whore on people's faces is actually entertaining. It's funny. And, and it's, it's funny because they have no idea how reliant they've ever been on actually trusting gloves until you tell them that they can't use them, right? So um, in my program, Infusion Odyssey, literally when you enter my program, you can't wear gloves. Five times, maybe in 15 years, have guys ever worn gloves. So it does not happen in my program because I will not let you hold on to an insecurity. You cannot ever discover your greatness if you're holding on to a belief that, that your physical, natural appendages won't be the reason why you can catch a ball. The second reason why I know people fear is because most people, when they first come out to work with me, they catch with their body. Why? Because they convince themselves that that is the easiest way to secure a ball, by encumbering it, right? Well, I would tell you this, how does that develop these? When you talk about catching, catching involves your hands. Not to mention the fact that when you are catching with your body, you are not rehearsing any sort of sensation and getting an idea on how these are going to work better for you. You're not creating any sort of um, pattern or rehearsal that is creating a repeatable process of being able to go, this is why I'm going to be able to catch the ball in this position. You're just throwing your body in the way and hoping it all works out. I don't want to function based on hope. I don't want to function based on coincidence. I don't want to be a 50-50 guy who isn't sure what's going to happen when the ball is in the air and you have to wait to figure out if it worked out in your favor or not. You'll never be great doing that. So now that we've talked about that, hopefully you understand why I'm addressing the emotional part and the psychological part of catching before we're ever going to talk about technique because that part is the driving force behind whether you allow yourself to be a great pass catcher or not. As you rehearse the things I'm going to tell you, this is about you getting out of your own way, not questioning what you are, and letting yourself break your game down into parts. If you do that, you will never, ever be the same pass catcher again. Last thing I'm going to say about that is this. I don't care what your starting point is. I don't care if you are naturally gifted. I don't care if you're not naturally gifted. I don't care if you drop 100% of your balls or no balls at all, right? This is a new starting point for you. So I need you to be a blank canvas, not questioning what you were, or what you're going to be, not holding on to what you've done in the past. This is a new you. You will never be the same pass catcher again after this video. So let's get started. So when you talk about catching, really I'm going to talk about three hand positions. Catching over the top, meaning when the ball is sternum and above. Catching when the ball is sternum and below. And then catching over your shoulder. Those are the three, three primary positions in terms of catching a ball. And so we're going to address the proper hand position for each one. As I go through this video series, please understand that I'm going to talk about technique, but I'm also at the end going to talk about us playing a very specific game with catching. We never just catch a ball. There is something much deeper that we're doing that is the psychological part of catching that is going to allow pass catchers to accelerate their growth like never before. Okay. So that being said, let's talk first about when you're catching the ball, sternum and above. It is critical that we understand hand position, but before we ever talk about hand position, you need to understand this. I cannot catch what I cannot see. So in order for me to be able to give myself the best chance to catch a ball, no matter where that ball is coming from, I need to always focus in on the nose of the ball, the tip of the ball, the X, the T, however it is you see this. I need to always focus in on that. I know, because again, I've been doing this for 15 years, that 98% of the guys never initially look the ball into their hands, ever. And they're the same guys who are telling you that they want to be great pass catchers. Well, you're not even giving yourself a chance to do that. That's like trying to hit a baseball when you're looking into the stands. That's like trying to hit a golf ball right in front of your face and you're looking up at the sky. 
and then wondering why you duffed it or sliced it or hooked it. It's illogical. So first things first, you need to give yourself a chance to even attempt to catch the ball. I always, always, always have to focus in on the nose of the ball. Nothing that you probably haven't heard before. If you've never heard that before, then you need to adopt that. I need to focus in on that T or that X or whatever it is you see it. Okay, that's the first thing. And I need to pick that nose up as fast as I possibly can. Sometimes when I'm rehearsing against air, where I'm not playing against the defense, I'm going to have a chance to pick up the ball right out of the quarterback's hand. And that's wonderful because the longer I can see the nose, then the more I can track the ball and process how it's coming in, and the easier it's going to be for me to catch it. But there'll be instances in practice and in games where the ball will be out of a quarterback's hands just as you are coming out of your break. And so you can't just see some general broad object coming at you and think that by doing that, you're going to be able to catch the ball. You need to actually pick up the nose as fast as you can so that you give yourself a chance to understand exactly where your hands need to be to secure the catch. If you don't do that, you're going to become a 50-50 guy all the time because all you're going to see is some broad object coming at you. You will throw your body in the way of it and, and hope that it ends up in your, in your chest or, or if you do stick out your hands, it's going to end up in your hands. You'll hope that that happens and you won't know if it's going to happen because you're not even tracking it. Okay, So that is our starting point. That being said, when I'm catching sternum and above, I, when I was growing up, they said something that uh, I've, I've come to believe is not the right way to explain how your hand should be, and that was create a triangle. The reason I don't like that is very simple. When you create a triangle, people are going to take you literally. And so when they take you literally, your hand's going to be like this, right? So I'm going to create a triangle where my pointing finger and my thumbs are actually touching. Well, two things are wrong with that. One, you can see from the side, my hands are way too flat. If I were actually attempting to catch a ball right now and I were taking that, um, and I was taking that literally, then what's going to happen is basically all I've done is create a wall for the ball. There's nothing there to actually secure the ball when it hits my hands. So I'm going to have to have the perfect timing to when the ball hits my hands to go like that to secure it. We're not good enough and we're not, we don't have, you know, great timing enough that we're going to live and die by doing that. So it is a losing proposition to think that you're going to have your hands in a triangular position and be able to secure the cash when in order to be in a triangle your hands are flat. The second thing is this, that if I were to create an actual triangle and I were to do that, then I want you to re recognize something. There is not enough space for the proper amount of the nose of the ball to end up coming through that tunnel or that canal. There simply isn't, right? So you can see that there's not enough space for the proper amount of the nose of the ball to come through that space. And so I'm just inviting the ball to hit that space and then go back out because there won't be enough of the ball coming through this canal for me to be able to secure it with my fingers. Okay? So, very simply, I'm going to tell you this. We don't want to create a, a triangle. I want to create a circle. And the circle is going to look like this. My fingers will never be touching. It's going to be like this. Okay? So my hands are like this. I'm going to invite the proper portion of the nose of the ball through my hands, which will be about 15% of the ball, like through this tunnel, okay? Where my fingers meet and my thumbs meet, not touching, but just in the circle that they're creating, right? So only about 15% of the ball should be showing through there. Definitely no less than that. That gives me a chance if I spread my fingers out, which is what I have to do, to be able to have a lot of space to secure the ball with my fingers, okay? So I want to be able to secure the ball with my fingers. That leads me to another point. When I was growing up, when people told you to catch or taught you how to catch, they told you to catch with your fingertips. Absolutely not. You will never catch with your fingertips. That is not the proper thing to do. In order to secure the ball, you need to open up your fingers, spread them out, and encumber the ball with your fingers, okay? Swallow the ball with your fingers. You are not catching with your fingertips, okay? We are catching with our fingers. So, sternum and above, I get my hands, in the proper position, never touching my pointing finger and my thumb, but creating a circle, a circle for the ball to come through. How much of the ball? 15% of the nose is coming through this canal right here, right? So, starting in above, that's what I'm doing. That could be here, that could be here, that could be here, that could be there. It doesn't matter where it is, that's not going to change. I'm going to see the nose and I'm going to create that canal or that tunnel, right, by creating a circle like this, okay? I need you to understand that 
um, you, you absolutely have this imaginary window that the ball needs to get into. And that imaginary window is this space right here, right? It's this space where I can comfortably do this, do that, do that, do this, do this, do that, right? This is all comfortable. It's this window that exists right here, right, right here. And why is that so important? It's so important because I never ever want to have to be making major changes, right? Major adjustments at the very last second when a ball is about to hit my hands you are going to drop that way more than you catch it. I don't want to do that. I want to see the ball as fast as I can. This is why it's so critical that you pick up a nose as quickly as possible because your job the second you do that is to get that ball in your imaginary window. This space again right here. Get it in that imaginary window. And when I get it into that window, now I feel comfortable. I feel confident. I'm like, well, I know the ball's coming at me. I completely see it. And now I can go through the process of getting my hands in the proper position and then doing what I'm going to tell you to do secondarily in just a moment. But I first need to get it in my window. I never want to be making some major adjustment at the last second that's going to put me in a bad position and probably make me drop a ball. Talking about the second hand position, it's when you're catching the ball from sternum or below, right? And that's when I'm creating what I would call a canal for the ball. I want you to think of like a boat, right? Where there's nothing on top of the boat, but there is a base of a boat. I'm going to create that with my hands. So my hands are going to be like this. right? Like this. My fingers are never touching because if they touch, there's not going to be enough space for the, most of the ball to come through my hands to a point where I can secure it. As is the case when I'm catching straight and above, there is a por portion of the nose of the ball that I want to come through my hands, right? In this case, it's actually a little bit less because now I have the bottom of my palms, right, that are actually involved with securing the ball. And so because of that, you won't see as much ball come beyond, right, beyond your wrist, right, beyond your palm. So it's going to be more like 5%, right, more like 5% as you can see, just like that, okay. As you can see, my hands are still encumbering the ball, my fingers are still around the ball. Okay, the only difference is now my thumbs are on top and my hands are on the bottom. What's really important about this is that you have to get to the level of the ball. I've watched guys attempt to catch balls that are at their knees and they attempt to do that like this, Right? They attempt to do that like this, and all that's doing is inviting the ball to go down to the ground because look at how your hands would be pointing. Right? If I do that, then I've actually put my hands in a position where my fingers are pointing down at the ground. So if they're doing that, what's there to secure the catch? Nothing. And the second it hits my hands and it goes down to the ground, it's done. So if the ball is that low, I need to get myself down to the level of the ball right? so I can always keep that ball in my imaginary window and be in a position where I get to catch like this. Arms relaxed, hands relaxed, like this. My hands are getting underneath the ball, underneath the ball, underneath the ball. Now we're going to talk about the third position, and that is catching over the shoulder. Catching over the shoulder is one of the hardest catches to make for one simple reason, and that is because wide receivers never look at the ball all the way into their hands from here to over their shoulder. Right In this case, it's over my right shoulder. They just don't do it. Right? They will see the ball just to here, and they're typically speaking, as I mentioned, they're not even looking really at the ball in terms of the nose of the ball coming into their hands. They're just seeing some object flying their way, putting their hands in a position that they think is going to work out, and then don't look at the ball from here to here, so they end up like this. Well, most guys drop that ball over and over and over again, and because they know that they can't catch that ball well because they're not disciplined in the process to catch that ball well, they will turn around instead on like a, a deep ball, right? So this is the case for a go route, a corner route, a deep post route where in all likelihood you're going to end up catching the ball like this. Sometimes it's not over your shoulder, sometimes it's out in front of you like this. But regardless, the reason guys don't necessarily like catching that is because, as I told you, they don't know how to bring their eyes to the ball. So what do they do instead? They turn around like this and they will try to front up on the ball so they can try to catch it like this. Well, the problem with that is, is that your quarterback has no idea that that's what you're going to do. He's throwing you the ball, assuming that you're going to keep running forward. The second you do this, you're going to slow yourself down, right or wrong. 
The answer is, yes, Chris, you're right. I'm going to slow myself down. And your quarterback isn't accounting for that. So the ball is going to land out there. You would have slowed yourself down to do this to catch the ball because you don't trust yourself to catch over your shoulder. But meanwhile, the ball is flying that way. So in all likelihood, the ball's selling over your head. Well, you just gave up the chance for a 40, 50 yard bomb potentially, if not a touchdown. I will tell you right now, you're not going to want to give up those potential big plays and you won't need to give those up after we're done with this video and teaching you how to catch from the mind and just technically how to get your hands in the right position. So catching over the shoulder, my hands going to be in the same position in terms of that canal. We're going to create that canal. We're going to create that boat, right? Where there's something underneath right there's nothing really necessarily over the top except for my thumbs but i'm catching the ball inviting the nose into my hand through my hands like this okay so those are the three primary hand positions sternum and above circle sternum and below boat right inviting the ball in always getting to the level of the ball and then of course catching over the shoulder which is also hands underneath creating that boat effect right in any instance though my fingers are never touching Last thing I'm going to say is this in regards to hand positioning. You absolutely have got to have your hands coming together to meet the ball. I cannot tell you how many receivers I've watched attempt to catch balls with their hands coming from out here and coming like this, like this. You've turned catching into a 100% timing action. And if you are not perfect in doing this, you are not catching that ball. And most people are not good enough to consistently catch the ball like this. I felt like I had really, really good hands. I could never live and die like that. I would be dropping balls I had no business dropping. So I want you picturing a triangle. I want you to picture your hands coming from the bottom corners of a triangle and meeting at the top of the triangle, right? Our hands are gonna be coming like this, like this, like this to receive the ball. Our, our fingers are never touching as I already mentioned, right? But we're coming to create that circle effect or that boat, that canal, right, with our hands underneath. We're creating that effect right there, but our hands have to come like this so they're already in place and together in order to receive the ball. I don't want my hands coming from out here. If you do that, you're going to increase your chances of dropping the ball exponentially, and there is no reason for you to suffer that. Now we're going to talk about this whole psychological component of catching. I actually put numbers or letters on the ball as you can see, right? And so my receivers in my program always have to recite numbers and letters, and that's nothing new. There's probably thousands of coaches right across the country that are doing that. But we are doing it on a much deeper level with a psychological component behind the ball, not just a discipline, right? The discipline part is that it's going to get you to look at the ball all the way into your hands, and, you know, technically you should be framing it and then reciting the number, right? That's what should happen, or reciting the letter. I will tell you right now that even in my program where I am constantly reinforcing that, you have receivers that you have to consistently tell, look the ball into your hands when you're reciting the number. Because they, generally speaking, when you first start doing this, are just gonna see the ball. They could be totally undisciplined in catching the ball and in tracking the ball into their hands, right? To the point where like they're catching like this, not looking at it, then they turn the ball and they say K in this case, right? And most coaches aren't even going to catch that. They're just going to hear the number and be like, good job. I'm going to see that immediately and be like, you didn't even lick the ball in your hands. So you might as well have not, not called the number at all because that's not helping you out. I need you to literally go through this process of seeing the ball all the way into your hands, right? Framing it, reciting the number, examining it for a second, and then tucking it. I need to see that the whole way. Your eyes cannot leave the ball the second it hits your hands for two seconds. And I need to see that literally you follow the nose to the point where if I put a dot inside of that nose, like you'd be able to see it from six feet away. That's how much I want you focused on the nose of the ball into your hands, right? So it is critical that you actually do that, critical. But then we don't stop there, right? It's not just about getting your hands in the proper position, no matter what position we're talking about. This is about inviting the ball in. Now we talked about the technical component. We talked about looking the ball in. 
those by themselves are not going to at all ensure that you're going to become this amazing pass catcher. The third and most critical component of that is giving to receive, giving to receive, giving to receive. I've seen so many pass catchers attempt to catch balls where technically they put their hands in the proper position. They're actually looking the ball in, but then they're trying to squeeze the ball and meet the ball right here and secure it just by gripping it. And that in itself is actually creating more of a wall effect, not a pillow effect, and we don't want that. We want to have soft hands, but strong hands. We want to be inviting the ball in because of two things. One, it helps us to see the ball longer just by giving a little bit, but two, it's actually softening the throw. And the harder your quarterback throws, the more imperative it is that you actually invite the ball in to soften it because if you don't, the ball is going to feel hard, you're going to catch it hard, and most likely you're going to drop it hard. And the harder he throws and the harder your hands are, the more it's going to hurt too. And if you're a young pass catcher, you won't like that. And then now that's some other force that you have to contend with. I don't want you contending with forces. It's hard enough to be a great pass catcher as it is. So we need to give to receive. And I want you to visualize just catching an egg, right? If I were to catch an egg, I would drop my hands a little bit in order to catch it. And that's what we're going to do when we're receiving the ball. I don't want you to drop your hands by 8 inches or 12 inches. I want you to literally see the ball coming. Create that triangle effect that I told you where your hands are coming together from the corners of a triangle to the top and go to meet the ball and as you're coming here I want you to give a little bit with your hands. Give a little bit with your hands to receive. Give a little bit with your hands to receive. So once I do that then I'm going to have soft hands meaning soft inviting it in and then strong hands meaning once the ball hits then I squeeze it and my hands and fingers become you know suckers on an octopus. That's what my hands become so the ball's not going anywhere. I'm here, soft, strong, see it, squeeze it, the ball's not gonna go anywhere. If you don't have soft hands, then you're almost throwing away technique and the fact that you're looking the ball all the way in because there's still a high likelihood you're gonna drop the ball. Now, the psychological component, this is everything. I talked about looking the nose of the ball in. I talked about how I have guys recite a number. We don't stop there because as I just told you, someone could recite a number and absolutely not look the ball all the way into their hands. So they're defeating the whole purpose. They're not getting any closer to transforming what they are as a pass catcher. What we do is we are playing a game with a very specific sensation. We want that ball to feel a very specific way. We want it to be so pure that catch to be so soft and so good and so perfect that it's almost as if we didn't even feel the ball into our hands. It's like that perfect hit off the barrel of a bat in baseball where I just pieced the ball and hit a line drive that one hop to the fence and it didn't even feel like it hit my bat because I absolutely hit it dead on the sweet spot. It's like golf hitting a drive and smashing it 290 yards or 300 yards and feeling like you didn't even hit the ball because it hit perfectly on the sweet spot. That's the game we're playing. So we're not just playing a game of catch the ball and recite the numbers. We're playing a game of feel. We want it to feel a very specific way. That's our game that we're playing right? Soft, strong, invited in, very specific way in terms of how it's filling our hands, and then reciting the number. So the psychological effect, or the letter by the way, the psychological effect of that is huge because here's what happens. One, when you play that game, this is so important for you to understand, it absolutely requires your hyper focus. It requires your mind to go from, I'm just going through the motions of seeing this big ball or big object come at me, I'll get my body in the way of it or throw my hands in the air and then I'll wait to find out if it all worked. You're not playing that game anymore. That game, your mind can be floating all over the place and you could play that game. That game allows you to worry about dropping it. That game allows you to worry about pressure. That game allows you to worry about judgment. That game allows you to worry about fear of failure. So I don't want you to play games like that because they're too broad and those games allow all those forces that you don't control to still affect you. When you play the game that I'm asking you to play that is all about a specific feel and that's how I win, right? A specific feel of the ball where it's like this perfect sensation where like, oh my gosh, that's why I catch. That's why I love playing wide receiver. When you play that game, it requires your mind to go from here to there. But when your mind goes from here to there, there's not enough space in there for your mind to then wander and worry about 
pressure, dropping the ball, fear of failure. It is the most amazing psychological effect that you will ever experience, and it's real. I've done it over and over and over again. I've watched kids again that could not catch because they play the game that everyone else plays in life, which has nothing to do with the mental game. They're just like going through some motion and hoping it all works out because it's supposed to. And you take them to this space where their mind goes like this and you require them to play a very specific game and they will go there and go there immediately. And it's powerful. And I will take kids that literally could not catch and they will be catching one-handed balls that they had no business catching before, didn't believe they could catch before, and be doing it over and over and over again with me throwing them hard at them in positions that are challenging. And then they won't even question it. They're just going to go where I lead them to go because they know they have a process that they can trust. And they know that I have a process that is proven to create the exact results that they want. So the psychological effect is huge. Huge. Aside from that, here's the other thing you have to understand. When our game is about playing this game of sensation, this game of reciting the ball into our hands, and we actually do that and are accountable to that, then what happens is, you need to understand, in order for me to play that game, in order for me to even be thinking about, okay, I want that perfect sensation of a catch, do you understand that you're not even thinking the ball will end up in your hands? Your attention is actually on, okay, I want that, that perfect catch, that sensation that Chris was talking about. Well, in order for that to happen, the ball's already in your hands. So subconsciously, you've already told yourself that you've caught the ball. It's, you're not even wondering if you're going to catch it. So we've diverted your attention to actually having already achieved the end result. Now it's just a matter of, okay, was it that sensation that I wanted? Was it that perfect, soft, but strong sensation? So do you understand what I'm talking about? The, the psychological effect is enormous. It's transformative. You get anyone to go into that space and they will immediately start transforming what they are as a pass catcher. And the second they start creating a different end result than they had before, then they start building up that confidence and then they're like, I never expect to drop a ball ever again. It, it is amazing to witness and it's 100% real. And so that's the game you need to play. If you don't play that game, then you're giving up the psychological aspect of catching, which is mental. You're giving up changing the emotional uh, aspect of catching as well because as I just mentioned when you go to that that space where you're playing a game that's this big by the way it's that big then your mind has to go with it your mind has to go to a space where it's this tight and there's not enough room for you to fear the things that everybody else around you are going to continue fearing I've tested this theory over and over again no matter if it's soccer baseball football whatever it is it is real and it is transformative transformative so I want you to live in that space you cannot doubt, ever. You gotta let yourself just go through the process of growing and development. Because once it's about hyper-focus, and once you're on onto playing this game of sensation, then when you don't get what you want, you're very aware as to why. That's the other powerful thing. Part of why people are so fearful and why they are so inhibited and why they create these negative self-fulfilling prophecies where they, they fail in their eyes over and over and over again and they drop you know, more than one ball in a row is because they don't know how to fix what went wrong. They never did. Why? Because they catch with gloves and they expect the gloves to do the work. Why? They catch with their body and expect their body to do the work. Well, how will I ever know why I caught or dropped the ball if that's the game I'm playing? You'll never know how to fix what's not working. I want you to be able to fix immediately what didn't go your way. And so this game is going to force you into feeling that for the first time ever in your life. And it's going to change you because now the, the success for you is going to be that you know how to fix something. It won't be like, oh my gosh, don't let me drop another ball. It's going to be, oh, I know exactly why that happened. Let's go, throw me another one. It's going to transform you. I've watched kids do that who were so insecure and did not believe in themselves. It's powerful. It's game changing. So if you adopt this discipline and this process, it's going to enter you into a completely different dimension of performing. In this case, it's catching a ball. If you want to truly transform everything it is that you're doing as a pass catcher, everything it is that you're doing as a route runner, everything it is that you're doing as an athlete, period, I don't care what sport you're playing, then what you need to do is watch my video series. The gateway to unlocking your mental game because that right there is going to walk you through every component of playing a different game emotionally, psychologically, and intellectually. The last thing I'm going to say is this. As you're rehearsing, I want you to rehearse in baby steps. Don't go out there and try to catch over the shoulder and have your quarterback throwing you 40-yard bombs. That's not what you do. 
you start jogging from 10 yards away, and as you start jogging, he throws you a ball, you catch it 18 yards away. Rehearse in small steps, okay? If you are not good at catching the ball, sternum and above, then don't have your quarterback rifle you balls from 15 yards away, like line up from 15 yards away, and have him just throw you nice smooth balls and gradually work your way up to, you know, catching balls at a speed that is consistent with what you would see in a game. The last thing I'm going to say is this. When you are rehearsing, you will never, ever, ever wear gloves. Ever. Period. End of story. I never want you wearing gloves. If you wear gloves, you're holding on to a subconscious insecurity that your hands aren't enough. So it defeats the whole purpose. When you're in a game, I don't care what you do. You can do whatever you want. But when you're rehearsing, I don't care if it's practice, I don't care if it's on your own, I do not want you to wear gloves. I want you to trust yourself to develop. That's what sports is. You have no idea how good you're going to be in whatever it is you're doing. Your growth potential is exponential. Let yourself grow. Let yourself grow. Don't judge you. There's nothing to judge. You're imperfect. The game is imperfect. You're going to drop balls. It's our reality. For the privilege of going out and scoring touchdowns and catching bombs and juking guys out and having posters with your number on it and we love Chris or whatever else, right? For the privilege of that, you have to accept that you're going to drop balls. It's built into our reality. And the second you accept that, you get to let it go. And once you let it go, then you're on your way to becoming something that you've never been before. If you want to see the entire video series that will allow you to play this completely different game, emotionally, psychologically, and intellectually, not just in regards to catching, but as a performer, visit FusionOdyssey.com, go to the video training series page, and, and enroll. It will change your development. It will change the way you look at sports. It's going to unlock the mental game, which is the part of the game that young people never access. Professionals hardly access. So you're not accessing it at all. And if you will access it, it will reduce, if not eliminate, your need to be this dynamic athlete. You are going to create a level playing field that you never had before because you're going to be able to play elements of the game and you're going to be able to unlock elements of performance that the people you're competing with will have no idea about and they will not be able to compete with you. Thanks for watching this video series, Fusion Odyssey, Chris Thomas. We'll see you next time.